Hi everyone, let's talk about the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. What it says is that for all n in the positive integers and for all a1 all the way through to a n and b1 all the way through to b n in the real numbers, so this is quite a strong inequality because we're not just restricted to positive reals or non-negative reals but to all reals. It holds that a1 squared plus a2 squared all the way through to a n squared times b1 squared plus b2 squared all the way through to b n squared is greater than or equal to a1 b1 plus all the way well, let's write the second term as well, a2, b2, all the way through to a n, b n, and then the whole thing is squared. So this is actually pretty useful in Olympiads and math contests because it allows us to make certain approximations and there are many special cases of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality that can be used, such as Engel's form. But we won't be getting into that, we'll just be proving the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality here. So this might seem a bit daunting, but let me rewrite it in an equivalent form, which is that zero is greater than or equal to. And we're gonna take the left side over to the right side. So we get a1, b1, all the way through to a n, b n, minus the sum of the squares of the ai times b uh, the sum of the squares of the bi and now what we're going to do is that we're going to multiply through by 4 so uh, there should be a square over here so we absorb it into the first term we get 2a1b1 all the way through to 2anbn squared and over here we're just going to leave it on the outside so we get a1 squared all the way through to an squared times b1 squared all the way through to bn squared now at this point you might notice that this is in the following form it's in the form that where we have something like p squared minus 4qr and that looks like a discriminant of a quadratic so let's let's go backwards let's try to construct a quadratic that has this as a discriminant one quadratic that has it as a discriminant is f of x equals to a1 squared all the way through to a n squared x squared minus the coefficient is 2 a1 b1 all the way through to 2 a n b n x and then we add b1 squared all the way through to b n squared now you might be wondering why I put a minus over here instead of a plus. Um, it's, po it's possible to work it out with a plus as well, but some things are going to be simpler if we have a minus over here. So I just put a minus there, but you can try working it out with a plus as well. Now I want to rewrite this quadratic in, in a way where these indices line up. So the one here and the ones here and the one here line up and the n here the n the n here and over here they line up as well so what we get is that this is equal to the sum of k equals to 1 through n of a k squared minus 2 a k b k plus well there's a there's a x square here and there's a x over here and we get bk squared and this is then equal to k equals to 1 through n and we can we can we notice that 
this is in fact a square so we write it as a square as akx minus bk squared and since this is the sum of squares this is going to be greater than or equal to zero and what that means is that f of x which is the quadratic itself the discriminant of f of x is going to be less than or equal to zero because this quadratic either has one real root exactly one real root or no real roots and that's that's what happens precisely when the discriminant is less than or equal to zero so that that proves the Cauchy-Shores inequality but we need to find the equality case so there are there are two cases that I want to point out uh, one is where a1 equals to a2 all the way through to a n they're all equal to zero in that case equality definitely holds so suppose sum a i is not zero okay so then we have a genuine quadratic uh, function here because the quadratic coefficient is not zero at least one of the a i is non zero so in that case what happens is that we have exactly one real root because then then what we're saying is that we have an equality here which means it equals to zero and that means that the discriminant is equal to zero and what happens in that case is that a k x is equal to b k and x is equal to some real root r so we get we find that a one r is equal to b one a two r is equal to b two all the way through to a n r is equal to b n so we can write that in vector form as a one a2 all the way through to a n times r is equal to b1 b2 all the way through to b n so equality holds if and only if for all k a k is equal to zero or the vector of a a's times some real r so some vector is equal to the vector of the b's so that proves the equality condition okay thank you for watching and i'll see you next time